Today we are going to talk about that how the T cells are developed in our body, how they are educated in the thymus and how they are activated by the antigens, right? So we start whole this process that origin of T cells and education of T cells in the thymus, right? This is all called T cell lymphopoiesis. What is the topic? T cell lymphopoiesis, right? So that from where the T cells come, what is the role of thymus in the maturation of T cells and what happens to T cell once they shift from the thymus to the blood and to the lymphoid tissue. Is that right? So let's start. Actually the origin of T cells like other uh, blood cells is from the bone marrow in the adult especially, right? Or even in children. First, uh, really before we start the development of T cells, we should talk about the development of the blood cells. In the development of human being, blood cells develop from which organ first of all? In a developing human being, blood cells develop in which part of the body first of all? In the developing human being, that start from embryo. Okay, let's talk about first the blood cells, if where the hemopoiesis occur, and later on we'll talk about that where exactly. Actually, this is for an embryo, and here is your yolk sac. What is that? Yolk sac. The blood forming cells, right? They first of all originate in the yolk sac, right? These are the blood forming cells. So, hemopoietic cells first of all originate in the yolk sac. But you know that during the development of an embryo, yolk sac basically disappears. So before the yolk sac disappear, these cells shift to the developing liver. So originally, hemopoietic cells originate in the yolk sac and from there they migrate to the developing liver. So you can say that these cells from yolk sac go to the liver. So before the birth, liver also plays a very big role in development of blood cells, maybe red blood cells or white blood cells or platelets, right? Then later on, from the liver, uh, these hematopoietic cells also populate the, yes? From the liver as well as some hematopoiesis goes in spleen also, but eventually, you know, from here it goes to liver and some of it goes to spleen. Then from spleen and liver, the additional function of hematopoiesis is taken by bone marrow house. So in the newborn, in the newborn, most of the hemopoiesis is going on in the bone marrow. Again, let me repeat it. That during the embryological development, first of all, blood forming cells appear in yolk sac. Then these, as uh, fetus is developing, these cells shift from the yolk sac to the liver and spleen. Even some authorities believe that they also shift to the lymph nodes, right? From there, the hematopoiesis uh, function is taken up by the developing bone marrow. At the time of birth, most of the hematopoiesis is going in the bone marrow, right? And now we will concentrate when hematopoiesis is going in bone marrow, where the lymphos in which way lymphocytes are being formed, right? So let's concentrate on the bone marrow now in an adult, right? Let's suppose this is a bone marrow house in an adult, right? In the bone marrow house, there are special cells which are concerned with the formation of blood cells and these cells are called, what, what are these cells called? Cell number one is called? Pluripotent stem cell. Pluripotent, yes please, stem cell. Now before I really move into lecture, I would like my students to have a clear concept what is stem cell. And then they must have a clear concept what is meant by the pluripotent. So who is going to tell me that what is your concept? Have you heard of stem cells? So many times, isn't it? What is stem cell? Is every cell in the body a stem cell or stem cell are very unique cells? What, what is special thing about stem cells? They can differentiate into any kind of cell. Look, any cell which can differentiate into any other type of the cells, that is called pot totipotential. 
which has the total potential. Zygote is the most wonderful totipotential cell. Zygote is the most wonderful totipotential cell because zygote has a full potential to make any tissue of the body. Is that right? Uh, but I want to know what is stem cell. Yes, uh, any one of you, you have, you're not sure you don't know stem cell? something you hear all the time but you don't know exactly how to okay this is so she has defined stem cell as something which keep on hearing but you don't know <laughs> i think this is a definition no one knows anyone has a better concept of what is stem cell because stem cell is something you should really know as medical personnel that now they say there are stem cells in almost every tissue no idea okay yes imad cultured into uh, making tissues or making other organs right this is what media is telling you but I'm asking you the very basic concept, what is a stem cell? You see, why I'm putting so much time right now? Because I know I have to teach you all the pathology and this word will come 10,000 times again. So once forever I want to settle the issue, what is stem cell? Let me tell you before you tell me something more new. Listen, <laughs> in the bone, in the bone marrow, you know there are erythroblasts. Erythroblasts are stem cell or not? Are they stem cells or not? Why they are not stem cell? Because they are erythroblasts. Okay. <laughs> he has a, again very good definition. Because erythroblasts are erythroblasts, so they are not stem cells. Right? But I will tell you some better way to talk about erythroblast and stem cell. Let me tell you. If you put here an erythroblast, this is a culture dish. If you put an erythroblast here and give it proper hormones and give it proper nutrition and proper sportive environment, after some time, these erythroblasts will start forming RBCs, red blood cells. And over the given time, all the erythroblasts will burn out into RBCs. Such cell cannot be stem cell. Because the problem with the erythroblast was, even though it was a precursor of the RBCs, it was precursor of the RBCs, that erythroblasts can give rise to many, many RBCs, but eventually all of the erythroblasts convert into RBCs and no erythroblasts are left in the end. But let's imagine another cell. We take this stem cell from here. We take this stem cell here. This stem cell, through one pathway, make erythroblast. And then these erythroblasts go into RBC. If you keep on supporting this culture properly, giving proper nutrition, removing the metabolic waste, actually this stem cell will keep on providing the erythroblast and erythroblast will keep on making RBCs. The beauty of stem cell will be that every time, look, now this is the point to understand. Every time when stem cell will multiply into two, right? One cell will go into differentiation, other will add to the original population. The beauty of the stem cell is, this is a type of cell, whenever it multiplies, it still maintains its own population. But erythroblast, when it multiplies, does it maintain its own population? Never. So this is the major difference in stem cell and other cell, other precursor cells, right? Because many students are confused about, uh, about the stem cell and the other precursor cells. Precursor cell is a cell which multiplies and eventually differentiates into more functional cells. But when a cell is multiplying and giving rise to mature tissues, Right? During that process, if it maintains its own population, then it should be considered stem cell. Is that right? But if a cell is multiplying and eventually all the original cell burn out into the product and nothing is left behind, then it is not a stem cell. From today onwards, you are clear what is stem cell? Very clear. Then, different stem cells have different potential to make different type of tissues. When we say there's a totipotential stem cell, it means the stem cell has a potential to make any tissue in the body. As I told you in the beginning, that basically uh, zygote, right, that is a totipotential stem cell because zygote has the capability to make all the tissues of the human body. Is that right? But when we talk about this particular stem cell, I said this is pluripotent stem cell pluri mean many it can many it can make many types of cell but it cannot make all type of cells so this cell in the bone marrow is not totipotential this cell in the bone marrow is not 
total potential. But because it can make RBCs and WBCs and platelets, so even though it is not total potential, but because it is still making many cells, so we call it pluripotent stem cell. Is that clear? That bone marrow has pluripotent stem cells, right? Now, don't forget the original topic. We are going to discuss from where the T cells come, right? But let's go to the basics. Now, in the bone marrow, there are pluripotent stem cells and under appropriate condition, they divide into two types of cells. Yeah, what are those cells? What are the two basic types of cells in which pluripotent stem cells in the bone marrow divide? Mr. Essen. GM, GM, no, don't try to be <laughs> impressive when you are not. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, anyone who will tell me, this is a very basic function, you know. If you have studied is something about the... Osteocytes. Oh my God, he has said osteocyte. Osteocytes are not the blood cells, my friend. They are bone cells. We are talking about bone marrow. Are you talking about the colony forming unit? Okay, I think it's still my turn to talk. No. <laughs> there is lymphoid, lymphoid, lymphoid progenitor cells. Progenitor cells. And there are myeloid progenitor cells. You will hear many things in your life first time. You are in the process of learning. Right? There are lymphoid progenitor cells and the myeloid progenitor cells. These are the first two divisions because as you will grow up in medical career, you will know that if this cell is damaged, result will be different. But if this cell is damaged, these products are coming, only those are deprived. Is that right? So there are lymphoid progenitor cells and the myeloid progenitor cells. Is that right? Yeah, you are thinking where is the erythroid progenitor cell? I thought, I thought that they, all, they all came from like uh, colony forming no, colony forming unit will form later on but because name of the colony forming unit means they will make one colony, yeah. maybe colony of only RBC. We are still very much primitive level, right? Colony forming units will form from these, is that right? So there is pluripotent stem cell which divide into lymphoid progenitor cell and myeloid progenitor cells. Then what happens? Then Lymphoid progenitor cell is supposed to provide you with lymphoid tissue, lymphocytes. That is supposed to provide you with lymphoid cells. Of course, that should provide you for the T cells, for the B cells and for the natural killer cell. But I will tell you that T cells are not formed here. They will be formed in thymus. But actually these cells are the grandfather of T cells, B cells, then natural killer cells. Is that right? And myeloid progenitor cells, they are the grandfather of, they give rise to what? Please tell me. Everything else in the blood, yes. They give rise to, later on we'll discuss RBCs and platelets and all other white cells other than the lymph lymphocytes like granulocytes which will granulocytes which will convert into neutrophils and eosinophils basophils right all these all the white cells plate these cells make all the white cells except lymphoid tissue lymphocytes plus platelet and rbcs so it means that erythroid series are coming from the myeloid series erythroid series is coming from myeloid series then then megakaryoid that is platelet series Megakaryoid series also coming from myeloid series and all the white cells other than the lymphocytes are also coming from the myeloid series. Let's recap. The very very great 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 grandfather in the bone marrow is pluripotent stem cell which gives two divisions. That is myeloid division and lymphoid division and myeloid division. Lymphoid division will eventually make the T cells, B cells and natural killer cells. Right? And myeloid series will make RBCs, platelets and all the white cells except platelets, uh, except lymphocytes. Is that clear? 